Well, this is where we woke up in the town of Uspacheta, near the border of Chile in the province of Mendoza. We stayed at this little hostel here, Hospedaje Mi Casa. It was 6,000 pesos a night, private room, highly recommended. Little did we know, as we set off into the first rays of light on this freezing morning, we were about to partake in the most awe-inspiring drive of our lives. Even as I sit here and narrate this a good six months later, I'm still touched by what I witnessed that morning. As we entered into this world of titans, I felt so small, yet at the same time giant, to be able to be witness to such beauty. time keeping it together up here because this is too much. It's too beautiful. I can't believe it. The beauty of it all was almost too much to bear. Up there in the clouds, when all is quiet, you truly are one with the heavens. As we made our way deeper into the Andes, it seemed as though we were going back in time until all sense of time was lost. ran parallel to the Mendoza River and the white peaks started to become more and more visible as we continued our ascent toward the Puente del Inca.
until eventually, instead of looking up to see them, we just had to look sideways. Not a bad view. Even though all snow was limited to the road's shoulders, no doubt thanks to the heavy work of the many men and their heavy machinery, the road became ever so much more slippery as layer upon layer of ice began to build as we gained altitude. This particular mountain pass is one of the several that lead to Chile, and we really lucked out on the weather as just two days later they were expecting substantial snowfall, which can block the pass. <laughs> As military checkpoints came and went, eventually, and seemingly out of nowhere, a parking lot appeared on our left-hand side and we parked. We had made it to the Puente del Inca. As we made our way past the precarious little souvenir shops that were opening for the expected onslaught of tourist buses coming in for the day, the arch began to show itself in the gorge just beyond a flat clearing. When walking onto the clearing, one must be careful not to slip on the ice that forms this time of the year, which is too easy to disregard because of the breathtaking panorama that one is surrounded by. <laughs> see, see. This sign reads that the Incas used to frequent the thermal waters here and that this area is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. <laughs> The thermal waters of this area contain sodium chloride, iron, and other minerals that give the rock colorful orange, yellow, and ochre tones. Okay, so here we are at the Puente del Inca. It's literally right on the highway, and you can park. There's some shops over here with, you know, some souvenir shops and whatnot, and you can park here. They don't charge you for parking, which is awesome and everyone's really friendly so make sure you pick up something obviously from the souvenir shops um you, you know you don't have to pay an entrance fee here either to come and see this this is a what's it called a national no. park no it's provincial. it's a provincial park and obviously open you know, to everyone who would like to come see it and um what else it used to be you need to drive from the from the main road you need to drive like from two hours to yeah, one hour. and from Uspallata yeah. to here is around two hours if it's one hour uh, if they... it's about a one hour drive from what's it called what's the town called um Uspallata yeah and uh, Uspallata being obviously about a two hour drive from Mendoza if I'm not mistaken definitely worth coming up here these snow covered peaks are amazing to say the least um blown away. Here we have the different stages of formation of this particular structure, which is a bridge, of course. It may have started as an ice bridge during the post-glaciation period, Avalanches coming from the northern slopes of the region would provide the materials of the bridge structure. 
Hot springs are responsible for the cementation and perdurability of the bridge over the years. I feel smarter already. We took in the sights a little longer and walked up and down the canyon of this little river that joins another river just a few kilometers downstream to form the Mendoza River. I told you in the previous video that the Mendoza River had its origins in the high peaks of the Andes, and I was being serious, as it forms between the Aconcagua and the Tupungato Mountains, the former being the highest point in the Americas and the latter one of the highest. As tourist crowds started to pile in, we sought refuge amongst the souvenir shops because I didn't want people asking me for my autograph, given my status as a world-famous vlogger. Actually, we were just hungry for some breakfast. So we just uh, ordered some, like a little uh, like a ham and cheese toast and a hot chocolate over at the little place. It was 1,200 pesos. And over here we have a picture of Charles Darwin who came here at some point and I guess he drew some stuff over down there on the uh, Puente del Inca I didn't see anything but fun fact After securing our hot chocolate, as well as our ham and cheese toasty, we made our way back to our car and drove to the Aconcagua viewpoint just up the road. We were now only 14 kilometers from the Chilean border. So you can come to this parking lot over here, which is literally five minutes up the road from where we just were at the Puente Linca, and take your selfie with the mighty Aconcagua volcano. <laughs> with the mighty Aconcagua right there. Amazing. We continue toward the border to catch a glimpse of the Christ the Redeemer of the Andes monument, unveiled on March 13, 1904, in order of the peaceful resolution of the border dispute. Engraved at the feet is written, Sooner shall these mountains crumble into dust than Chileans and Argentinians break the peace which at the feet of Christ, the Redeemer, they have sworn to maintain. accident up the road prevented our progress to the monument towering at 3,832 meters above sea level on the pass of La Cumbre, the highest point on the old road between Mendoza in Argentina and Santiago in Chile. We simply made our way back down again, baffled at the fact the world could be so beautiful. So all along this area, all along this route right here, there's these little places you can rent, you know, sleds and, you know, 
ski stuff, ski materials, and slide down these hills. And then there's a little fence there that'll block you from rolling onto the highway. And subsequently prevent you from being crushed by one of those trucks. As we backtrack down the same road we took earlier that morning into the Martian looking terrain, it had taken on a completely different appearance from this morning. We pulled over on the stream bank of the Mendoza River to check out this prehistoric looking place. The place would be a playground for a geologist. Very much a Martian landscape. Now that the sun was beating down on the red rocks, the temperature was both cold and hot at the same time. Hard to describe. Go you know, check out this river. After another successful day of exploration in the books, we rolled back into the quaint little town that is Uspallata and did a spin through the neighborhoods. Being winter, the Alamo trees were barren, and since I was filming on my phone due to technical difficulties, it makes everything look more white. But I can assure you it is a charming little town and in the spring and summer months, the many trees are green. The fact that no matter which direction you look, you have a majestic view of the Andes alone is enchanting enough. The town was once a stop by the now disused Transandean Railway and even has its own airport. Funny enough, when we got back into town, we received the news that not only was the pass to Chile blocked due to the accident mentioned earlier, but also the road back down to the Ruta 40, which meant we were stuck here for another night, with no complaints on our end. That night, we had an excellent dinner at a restaurant called Al Juan, which I highly recommend you check out if you are ever in the area. Una pinta. Okay.